Well, hello and welcome to Online Church for this Anzac Sunday. My name is Matt Hazelwood. I'm the Rector of St Martin's Kalara and St Peter's East Linfield. And it's so good to be together. Uh, welcome if you're in our community and uh, in our churches. And hi, I'm Alice and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our special Anzac Sunday online service. Look, we're so glad you're able to join us. And it would be really helpful if everyone could please take the time to fill in one of the Connect cards. And you can see the link above, and that would really help us. Yeah, that's right, Matt. Some people have been filling in a Connect card. But can I really encourage you to please, please fill one in uh, so that firstly we know um, that you've been gathering online and engaging with online church. It's um, really hard to keep track of who's gathering online unless you tell us. Um, second, um, you can let us know how you can pray. We can pray for you or how you'd like to keep connecting with our community. Um, and thirdly, for any newcomers, hi newcomers out there, it's really great to have you with us. Um, and we want to help you connect in with us in our community. Um, so it means we can follow you up well if you fill in a Connect card. That's right, Alice. And uh, on this Anzac Sunday, we're gathered here in the sight of God as loyal citizens of Australia to honour the memory of those who have made the supreme sacrifice while serving our nation in time of war or peacekeeping operations. As we stand at this hour, let's offer our thanks to God for the remembrance of the sacrifices made by the original Anzacs and countless others before and since then, and for the countless blessings granted to our people in peace and war. And let us give thanks for our democratic system of government and pray that God may continue to bless, to bless us with freedom and peace. And finally, let, our, let us dedicate ourselves to serve others as faithfully as those who have gone before us. In silence, let us be conscious of God's presence with us. We're going to have a moment's silence. We're in an extraordinary time. With such protective measures, it's really closing down most of, of our world today and, and it's even restricting what is one of our most important national events, uh, which is Anzac Day. And I think back to what it must have been like for Australians in World War I. You can think back, there was 5 million Australians at the time, 62,000 of them were killed, 150,000 of them were wounded, 400,000 returned from war, so about one in three households were affected by the war directly. And when those circumstances, they, they, they shout out things that they did then and they shout out today to us. We have to cling to those truths that Christ died for us, that he demonstrates his love for us. God does in that Christ died for us. And I know we know that. But clinging to that can be a difficult thing to do in these circumstances. And it's, a, it's a been a very big year for the Australian Defence Force. We've had a whole raft of things happen in fairly recent times. We had the bushfires with our support to that. We've had floods. We've had uh, aid sent to Vanuatu and to Fiji. And we're operations around the globe. And, and now we're in the midst of this coronavirus uh, issue. And so on this Anzac Day, would you pray for your Defence Force? Would you pray that they would discharge their duties with diligence and dedication? Would you pray that they would be courageous and compassionate? That they would bring justice and peace and hope as they discharge their duties? And that they would come to Jesus as ones who were weary and heavy laden? That they would find their rest, rest for their souls? as they contemplate Jesus as their Lord and Saviour when they're thinking about eternity. And pray for those who've been affected by war. Pray that our Heavenly Father would heal the wounded, would bind the brokenhearted, and would comfort the suffering. Pray for our leaders too, both in the Defence Force and our political leaders, that they'd make wise decisions as we face these very uncertain times. Thank the Lord for their good decisions, for the way that they have handled the coronavirus crisis, and pray that they would be kind and considerate, as well as prudent and practical as they go through the months and the weeks ahead. 
pray for God to be glorified this answer day too. sing together God's praise. for our nation. May we always walk in the paths of truth and honour. May we be a beacon of light to all nations who struggle for self-government and freedom. Strengthen our leaders that they may govern us soberly and sincerely and so fulfil their heavy responsibilities. Make us a just people, wanting other nations to have the same privileges that we claim for ourselves. Help us to honour our native soil with our lives here at home and abroad. And grant this for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. God of peace and love, you have made of one blood all nations to dwell upon the earth. And by your Son, Jesus Christ, have broken down the walls of partition between race and race. Break down afresh all that divides us from one another. Temper our pride, shame our jealousies, and do away with all prejudice, 
that the bonds of fellowship and mutual service may unite the East and West, the North and South, and that we may live together in perpetual peace to the glory of your great name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, let's pray a prayer of thanksgiving now. Lord our God, we offer to you our heartfelt thanks for all your mercies to, for, our, for our Commonwealth, for the devoted lives of those who have made this nation great and free, for deliverance from civil strife and bloodshed, and from, from the craft of and power of foreign foes, for the brave and faithful dead who willingly laid down their lives on the battlefields of war, or who succumbed to the perils of the deep or of the air, and we bless you for, your, for their dauntless courage in defence of this country. May our remembrance of their sacrifice be a reminder to present and future generations of the cost of our freedom and of all the benefits we enjoy and an incentive to sacrificial service for others. Help us to treasure our great inheritance that your blessing may rest on our land till the kingdoms of the world become the kingdom of your Son, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We now pray do a prayer of remembrance. Almighty God, King over all, who in the multitude of your mercies have brought us to this day, we thank you for all your goodness and loving kindness, for the gracious providence that guided and sustained us in the dark days of war, and for the defence you raised up for us in our time of need. We thank you and praise you for the grace that upheld us through the years of peril and sorrow, and for the final deliverance you gave us, we praise and bless your holy name. We cry out to you now as we cried out to you in trouble, and you heard us. We put our trust in you, and you were given courage and confidence. Grant, Lord, that we, remembering your great goodness, may give ourselves in your obedience to your holy will, and live as your faithful children, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns and is worshipped and glorified with you, Father and the Holy Spirit, one God for evermore. Amen. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our local federal member and Minister for Communications, Paul Fletcher, will bring us our Bible reading. Well, I'm Paul Fletcher, member for Bradfield, and I'm really pleased to be here at this combined St Martin's and St Peter's virtual service uh, for the Sunday following Anzac Day, where, of course, we're marking the service and sacrifice of so many Australians. Uh, we're doing it in a different format this year, but it's just as important as ever. And the first reading is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in up uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Well, the next reading is John 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remained in his love. 
I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. It'll be helpful if you can have your Bible at home open to John 15. Or you can open the Bible tab in our online portal and select John 15, and we're picking it up from verse 9. Well, today's Anzac Sunday, and it is a wonderful opportunity to remember, to reflect on the sacrifices of others so we have the peace that we enjoy now. The stories, the memories, they speak to the resilience and the love that we need now as we live in this period of isolation, as we live in this pandemic. There's one particular story that I find very moving I just wanted to share with you today. It's the story of Australians on the Western Front who served in the 5th Division. They paid a terrible price in lives lost in a diversionary battle in Fromel on 19th of July 1916. The blood of more than 1,700 Australians was shed on the soil in France in Fromel and the Pheasant Woods. Australian diggers attacked a German strong point called the Sugarloaf. Uh, but to get there, they had to pass through open and muddy ground. The Germans had the advantage and the attackers were literally slaughtered in the open ground. The bodies of of more than that were missing in action and never found. 250 were placed into a common grave in the pheasant wood pits. Well, the good news is that uh, as at last year, the names of 233, 93% of the 250 buried by the German uh, Bavarian Infantry Regiment soldiers following that Battle of Fromel are now known. The graves of 166 or 66% of those 250 soldiers whose remains were recovered from those communal pits near Pheasants Wood were reburied with full military honours in the new Fromel Pheasant Wood Military Cemetery and they're now identified with their names. But I I want to tell you about is the Fromel Primary School and its principal Madame Natalie Brawl. In this quiet little village of France, the villagers and Madame Brawl didn't need any prodding to name their primary school Les Cobbers or Les Cobbers. (laughs) Cobber is uh, part of Aussie slang. Of course, the meaning of the word Cobber is friend. How fitting for this little school to be called Les Cobbers. It's because of the passage of John 15, 13, where it says, greater love has no one than this, than they lay down their life for their friends. Just like soldiers who laid in their lives, the Bible speaks of Jesus' sacrifice that stands at the epicentre of human history. When Jesus laid down his life for us, our Saviour died for our sins, and in his death, God's love was demonstrated. So the Christian life begins when we realise Jesus Christ is at the very centre. And just like the Anzac spirit of mateship, it's got to do with real friendship. Just look at those wonderful verses in John 15, verses 9 to 13 with me again. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Well, three things we learn today as Jesus calls us his friends. Verse 9, to be Jesus' friend who is experience his love. 
Verse 10, it's to obey his commands. Verse 11, it's to share his joy. And it all comes from that key principal verse, verse 13. Jesus calls us his friends because he loves us. Greater love has no one than this. They lay down their life for their friends. And this shows us that the love of Jesus is immense for us. He was speaking of himself in the light of what was going to happen. And so to experience Jesus' love is to know he laid down his life for me. Just think about how huge that is. He laid down his life for me. See, we look back now and we see that the centerpiece of all history is the clear demonstration of God's love for us. Jesus takes upon himself the consequences for my rebellion, your rebellion, that Easter sacrifice and victory. For me, for you, for sin, for all of us, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. And Jesus did that. In his first letter, in, uh, in uh, 1 John 3.16, the Apostle John says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. You see, love is to be enjoyed, uh, to be enjoyed is to be responded to. How have you responded to Jesus' love for you? That's what Anzac Sunday enables us to consider. The love of others laying down their life for us. Verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Remain in my love. I want you to imagine you had an exceptionally rich and adoring uncle who gave you a red Ferrari. Beautiful, sleek, super fast. And whenever you go out, though, you simply drive your second-hand, well-loved, mostly reliable Hyundai XL. So while ever the Ferrari sits in the garage, you never get to actually enjoy your uncle's love properly because you've never responded to it. Love to be enjoyed must be responded to. God wants us to respond to his love and now remain in my love, he says. In verse 10, if you obey my commands, you'll remain in my love just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. Verse 12, my command is this, love each other as I've loved you. You see, to be Jesus' friend is to obey his command and his command is that we love one another. God's commitment to us is love, and our commitment to each other is to be love. We are sent to love one another. We behave, though, much of the time in this world as if we've been sent to compete with one another. His word tells us we are to truly love each other as he has loved us, and the standard he sets is laying down our lives. Verse 13, the key verse, greater love has no one than this. They lay down their life for their friends. So let's understand this. It's not a state that you and I achieve. Uh, the moment we do achieve it, the whole thing, it's over, isn't it? Because once you lay down your life, there's nothing more that you can give. That's it. It isn't a state I've reached. You know, I've kind of got that point now. It's not a pass mark in the love exam. It's a commitment to an ideal. You and I are invited to acknowledge the true goal of our human life is to accept the love of God for us by committing to love other people in the same way he's loved us. We won't achieve this unless we commit ourselves to it. We acknowledge it. We act like he did, like Jesus, and say that's the direction I'm going, Jesus' way, and we keep facing that way. You know, it was said of one of the early climbers of Everest who died in making an attempt on that mountain that when they found his body in the snow, his face was fixed on the summit. His face was to the summit. See, you and I, if we're Christians here today, we have turned our face to the summit, to the light of the love of God. And when we die, I trust our faces will be to that light. If you're not sure, if you haven't committed yourself to Christ, look up. Because you and I can never love as Christ loved us, but we can live our lives acknowledging that that's how we ought to live. That's what we were made for. That's the direction of my life. This is why I have been put on this planet. And as we turn our eyes in that direction, following Jesus, we will abide in him. His fruit will show in our lives. It's been said of the Christian life that it's not so significant where a person has reached. It's much more significant where they're facing, where they are moving. Where are you moving? Because as we face 
in that direction, if we let that commitment rule our lives, our joy will be complete. It's what it says in verse 11. Jesus says, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. To be, to be Jesus' friend is to share his joy. It's the joy of completion, not the pleasure of indulgence. It's to know why I was born, what I'm here for. And there's great satisfaction in knowing that. It may not ease the circumstances of life, but it'll equip me to cope with any circumstances. It's been said that if a person has a why for their life, they can live now with almost any how. Because adversity means an opportunity to grow, doesn't it? At the heart of growth is that ability to be resilient. Resilience is all about that ability to cope, to bounce back. How can we develop resilience in these times of pandemic and isolation? Well, Australian clinical psychologist Valerie Ling says, adversity means an opportunity for us to grow. And in a recent article, she says, now is the time to invest deeply in God's identity when ours feels like it's falling apart. It may feel like we're losing parts of who we are, what we do and why we love and who we love. So she says, one thing that we can rest on is the unfailing character of God. His steadfast love never ceases. Embrace the opportunities you have to soak in his word that points to his unchanging nature. Take time to recall the message of the Bible that our hope is not based on things seen, but on the unseen, 2 Corinthians 4. That we are eternity bound, that not one of our hairs goes uncounted, Luke 12. That not one tear goes unseen, Psalm 56. He's the God of your today and your tomorrow, and his mercies are new every day. And some of those mercies are in the form of healthy psychological habits. And in God's goodness, he's given us many practical ways to build, protect and build our mental health, to build resilience. It's very helpful, isn't it? So I want you to notice that there's this linked chain that runs through these verses in John 15 that helps us with that. From understanding God's love for us to responding to that love by obeying his command to love each other to get that complete joy. The, true, the joy of that true relationship relating to God as he is. So many people in our community try to relate to God as something less than God. In their heads, they believe in a God of their own making. A God who fits their own mind and reason, a God who suits them and who never disagrees with them. And so there's no joy in that kind of relationship. That God is a yes man. But relating to God as he's re revealed himself to us in Jesus, in the Bible, if I get that right, if I put God at the very center of everything and get myself out of that place, because that's what I'm always trying to do, that's when I begin to know his joy. The relationship becomes real. God is God and I am me. That's what it is to be a friend of Jesus, to experience his love, to obey his command, to love one another and to share his joy. So how do you know if you're friends with God? Well, how do you know if you're friends with any human being? Tim Keller says there are two marks in this passage. A friend always lets you in and never lets you down. You give your life for your friend. Make sacrifices. Friendship means getting involved. You, you lay down your conveniences and your schedules. A friend always lets you in, never lets you down. And Jesus laid down his life for us, uniquely, of course, and all of us will die one day. And the minute you realize his death does everything for you, you begin to say, he did this for me. Why? Because you're my friend, my cobber. Do you know that? He loves you not because of how good you are or what you've done or not because you're perfect in any way, shape or form. He loves you because he loves you. And greater love has no one than this. They lay down their life for their friends. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that Jesus calls us his friends. On this Anzac Sunday, we pray you would teach each of that deeply. To know that to be friends with Jesus is to experience his love. That it's to obey his commands and it's to share his joy. Help us, Lord, in our thoughts, in our choices, in our actions to keep coming back to that key principle, that verse 13 principle. As Jesus calls us his friends because he loves us, that we might lay down our lives for others, for your glory. Amen.
Australian Navy and although he and his family live locally he's currently based in Canberra and he's put together some reflections for us on Anzac and uh, to help us and he's going to bring us a commemoration prayer. Well good morning everybody my name's uh, Rear Admiral Lee Goddard and I'm actually uh, a local I live in uh, East Linfield with my family Alex and my son Dominic and my daughter Asha and Tilly and we're close friends with uh, Reverend Matthew Alice and Ben and Chloe, and it's really special to be here today with the uh, Kalara St. Martin's Anglican Church and those of the uh, East Linfields as well on this uh, very important Anzac Day Sunday to commemorate those who have gone before us, those who are currently serving, of course those who will serve in the future as well. I've served with the Navy for nearly 33 years, joining as a 17-year-old and certainly I've seen um, many uh, very challenging situations, both at sea and uh, overseas, both in conflict and in peacekeeping and other situations and border protection. And I admire all those who I've served with and all those who've gone before me. Um, uh, in the room right now behind me, I have some pictures of uh, my great-grandfather from World War I, who was a tunneler. 
um, at the Clara Flyways Church. There's a window dedicated to my wife Alex's uh, great-grandfather, um, Frankie Ray, who was killed um, at Bully Court after landing on Gallipoli on the 26th of uh, April. And there's also a picture behind me of Jefferson H. Walker, the captain of HMAS Parramatta, a ship that I served on, who was sunk in World War II during the very bloody battle of Tobruk. His family gave me his picture of medals so that we could remember him in such tragic circumstances. I want to particularly acknowledge this Anzac Day, though, all those who serve the COVID-19 and the bushfires has certainly been very challenging for Australia and also the whole world. I'm currently involved in border protection and it's been a very ethical and very uh, operationally challenging time for our leaders, for us as a society, and also for those who serve on the front line. A great, great empathy for those who have been away from family, who are feeling physically challenged, who are feeling very tired and very uncertain. It is a great period of anxiety for all. So what does Anzac Day mean to me? It means reflecting on service, reflecting what is great about being an Australian, and also about the fact that many young men and women have served this country selfishly and have lost their lives, and of course have left behind societies, families, and those who have mourned for many years onwards. And while we've created legends from these stories, quite rightfully, we've also sometimes forgotten the great sadness that should have been left behind as well. And of course, in modern society, we have those who have recently returned from conflict and are still suffering now. So they are in our prayers today. So I would like to now, at the behest of Matt, read the commemoration prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for all those who did not count their lives dear to themselves, but laid them down for our sakes. Let the memory of their devotion and sacrifice always be an example to us, that we may live as faithful servants of him who died for our eternal salvation. We look forward with thanksgiving to that time when we will join with all who have died in the faith, in the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where sorrow and pain are no more, and where every tear will be wiped away. In Jesus' name we will pray. Amen. So my thoughts are with you all today. My thoughts are with those in Australia who have anxieties and have pain and have fear and have uncertainty. And I want to admire the men and women who have served Australia today, yesterday and tomorrow. And they're not just the Australian Defence Force. They're also our policemen, our health workers and those many others that serve Australia. So thank you very much.
York is a member of St. Peter's East Linfield, and he's going to bring us the Ode to the Fallen. Ode to the Fallen. These well-known words help us to remember friends and families of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. I particularly think of my father, Pilot Officer George York, and his Halifax bomber crew, who were shot down over Germany on the 9th of the 12th, 13th of August, 1944. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Jesus, my Redeemer, there is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love.
joining us for online church today a couple of things as we go today uh, if you would like to join in our christianity explored group or in our introduction to the bible ptc group don't forget to let me know by filling in a connect card secondly what we want to do is collect some of those things when we go shopping and bring them into church on the first saturday of the month so we're only going to have a collection day on the first Saturday of the month. I'm going to ask you to bring it into either St. Martin's Kalara Parish Hall or St. Peter's Church uh, on the first Saturday of the month between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on the first Saturday of the month. Bring one or some of the things, uh, drop them off, and then Anglicare will come and pick all those things up and we'll be able to share those in particular with people who are in deep need at this time. It's been so great that we can meet together online and gather together. And I pray that you know the love and friendship of Jesus this Anzac Sunday and in and through our church community and local community. And if you want to find out more about Jesus, if you want to find out more about that hope, please contact me. Fill in one of the Connect cards. Our church building isn't open, but our hearts are. And I'd love it if everyone could take the time to fill in one of those Connect cards. That would be really awesome. So our care cluster groups um, are going to be meeting very shortly over Zoom for morning tea or supper. And so I pray that that's a really wonderful time for fellowship, encouragement and prayer. Well, let me pray as we close our time together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn towards turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.